What's the best sounding attenuator? This question comes from Mars in the Philippines. What a great name. <laughs> Love it. Hey Paul, thanks for making YouTube videos. I highly appreciate your knowledge and wisdom. Well, thank you. I appreciate you watching them. I'm aware of the types of audio attenuators for volume controls that's used in audio. My question is, what do you think and what do you hear as the best type and the best sounding audio attenuators for volume controls? Thank you, Mars. Well, first off, I think you're going to get some people that are going to go, ah, pots, you know, attenuators sound different. They're just, they're resistors. How can they sound different? So for you all, you can, you can watch and laugh or you can just go away. Um, I, I've spent years playing with different attenuators from stepped attenuators to volume controls to high, you know, there, there's everything from Penny and Giles, high performance uh, attenuators to Alps and Noble and uh, depending on the, the, the element that's moving like conductive plastic or carbon, there's any number of um, different substrates that are used in a pot. In a stepped attenuator, you have a, a switch with silver or gold contacts, usually, and multiple resistors, and they can be very high quality. All of them sound different. Sorry, but they do. Mars knows it. And on a high performance, highly resolving system, you can easily hear that kind of stuff. We struggled with this problem for, oh, two or three decades because it, it is a big problem. In fact, the, one of the biggest problems in any preamplifier is that damn pot, the attenuator, whatever you do. And people have done some crazy stuff. I, I, you, you still have to deal with the sound. T talking of crazy stuff, our, our friends down the street, Air, uh, ch uh, the late Charlie Hansen, um, who, who was a real... He was a real good guy, and he, he really contributed a lot to our industry, and I, I admire Charlie, and I'm sorry to hear of his passing. But he went to the, the trouble. He wanted to have remote control. Well, we all want to have remote control, right? But he didn't want to sacrifice sound quality whatsoever. So Charlie built this crazy-ass attenuator with, with a, a wheel and, a, you know, when, and you hit the remote control and it tick, 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 you know, and it, it's like a giant hand coming up. I mean, so uh, motorized pots, crazy attenuators with wheels and lever, you know, it, every, everything you can imagine to get good sound out of an attenuator. And it's, it's a real problem. So I will share with you, and this is a shameless plug, all right? Let's be straight up front. This is a shameless plug. Years ago, I got so tired of this problem that I decided the best attenuator would be no attenuator. So how do we do that? Well, instead of running the signal, the musical signal through the potentiometer, which is essentially just a variable resistor, regardless of how you mechanize that, and varying the impedance as it goes up and down, all of that that goes through it, we wouldn't do that. What we would do is make a amplification stage where the amplifier itself changed its gain. And the pot controlled the gain of the amplifier, and the signal never runs through the pot. And that's what's called the gain cell. The gain cell is used in our Stellar series. Again, shameless plug. It's used in our Stellar series, and it, it is as transparent as I've ever heard any kind of volume control. Because that gain cell, essentially, is just changing the gain of the amplification stage. You see, the problem is, and, and this is how I finally came to this, this idea that took me about a year to figure out how to do it, but in any case, you have typically a fixed gain. So 20 dB, 15 dB, 11 dB, whatever. You have a fixed gain stage. Somebody's getting me. Oh, nice. We're having dinner at the kids. <laughs> love the Apple Watch. A anyway, you have a fixed gain, like 11, 12 dB. And now, 
you have a pot before it to turn up and down how much is going into that gain stage, so that fixed gain. So if you don't want very much volume, you've still got this high gain stage, but now you're just going to put a little bit into it according to the pot, and a little bit more, but almost never do you raise it all the way up and use all the gain of this stage. So this gain is mostly wasted. It's just sitting out there as an 11 or 12 dB, 20 dB gain stage, and then you vary the amount going into the gain stage to get out what you want. So that always seemed kind of counterintuitive to me. Why do that? Why not just make the gain of the amplification stage what you want with a constant signal going in from your source? So whatever the source is, I vary the gain of the amplifier, and that's what comes out, and that turned out to be absolutely transparent, as transparent as any amplifier stage can be. I mean, every stage adds a little bit, every pot adds a little bit, every part, every capacitor, <clears throat> but it's, it's the best I've ever heard. And even in, the, in our expensive preamp, the BHK, we don't use the gain cell, but we use uh, a sort of a, a hybrid of that where we, still change the gain of the vacuum tube in, in the BHK, and we don't run it through a pot. So the answer to your question is, the very best attenuator is no attenuator. All right. Good question. Thanks, Mars. Talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.